My fellow members of Blue Key annually select a member of the CSC faculty to provide a greeting at Ivy Day. Dr. Ron Bowles, Professor of Rangeland Management, is the individual who has been asked to speak this evening. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Bowles. Thank you, Draven. Greetings, greetings to all. Chancellor Terman, President Ryan, Vice President Powell, uh, the rest of the Shadron State College administrative team, my fellow faculty members and staff, uh, all the members of uh, Blue Key and Cardinal Key, our, our royalty tonight, uh, congrat congratulations to our king and queen. And also greetings to parents, grandparents, husbands, wives, children, distant relatives, friends. Hopefully I've captured everybody. Okay, greetings. Thank, thank you for prioritizing your time to be here this evening. But most of all, greetings to our honorary students that we're gonna honor here tonight for their academic and scholastic achievements. You know, as a general statement, some of you students are intellectually gifted. And with that, I, I applaud you for using your God-given talents. Some others of you, not unlike myself, had to work a little bit harder at it. And with that, I, I have a special applause for you because you had to work a little harder to be here. But again, congratulations on your scholastic achievements. Sometime this evening, in the near future, and hopefully continually, you'll recognize the importance of turning to those that are seated next to you and thanking them for the contribution that they made into your college career. Somewhere along the way, they laid the foundation uh, and instilled in you the, the feeling of importance and the understanding to excel academically. So make sure you uh, you express those heartfelt thank yous. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Blue Key and Cardinal Key members and representatives for the opportunity to make a few brief comments this evening. I, I think these kinds of uh, opportunities need to be brief and, and I will be brief. One of my true blessings in life was to have a maternal grandmother she was our family's matriarch. She spent her entire life as a child, as a young adult, as a young mother, as an aging grandmother, working physically on a small family-oriented dairy farm in South Central Pennsylvania. The same dairy farm that I had the unique opportunity to, to spend my first 18 years. You probably know enough about dairy farming that that necessitates the fact that she got up very, very early in the morning. She was usually up by four o'clock in the morning. She'd have the dairy bucket calves fed, the eggs gathered, and the milking equipment assembled by five o'clock when the milking crew showed up to milk the cows. By six or 6.30, she had breakfast on the table, and I'm not talking about cold cereal and milk, okay? She had the, the breakfast dishes cleaned and by seven o'clock she was in her garden before it got too hot. And that brings me to a story I'd like to, to share with you. Well, let, let me back up. I had an opportunity to assist her in that garden. It was probably at least an acre in size. Uh, but she'd have her pantry in her basement was lined with rows and rows of jars of, of produce and vegetables. <clears throat> we would spend endless hours on her front porch, snapping beans, husking corn, pitting cherries, shelling peas, peeling peaches. You got the, you got the, you got the, the, the picture, okay? And the whole time, she's singing traditional Christian hymns. She's the one that instilled in my brother and I and our first cousins the Ten Commandments, 
the Lord's Prayer, the Beatitudes, and numerous other uh, biblical passages. I vividly remember one day, it was, it was August, I was in grade school. It was mid-morning, we were working in the garden, pulling weeds. It was hot, I was sweating, the gnats were biting. I was itchy. I was complaining. Grandma said, Ronnie, whatever you do with your life, there will always be weeds to pull. And that was one of the very, very first grandma-isms that I was exposed to through my years with her. There's been many. And I've shared quite a few of those grandma-isms with my students over the last nine years here at Shadron Estate. My students will test the fact that I, I like to make a lot of assigned readings, not necessarily in textbooks, but uh, their assignment is to bring me a top 10, the top 10 take home messages that they derive from having read that passage. Okay, and then we talk about those in class. But I thought that was a natural lead in to share with you the top 10 grandmaisms that she instilled in me. And this is certainly not an all inclusive list, but here we go. Number 10, we'll have a countdown here. Grandma always in, in, impressed upon us that there's three primary things necessary for success in life. Number one, honesty. Let's face it, your reputation is everything. Work ethic, you gotta get out of bed, you gotta get out of bed in the morning. And communication skills. One-on-one -on -one with your friends and even people you don't know or have met for the first time, but certainly also in, in, groups of, in large groups of people. You've got to be able to express yourself both verbally and in a written word. Say what you mean and mean what you say. Number nine, identify and pursue a passion in life. Devote your life to it, have no regrets, and don't look back. Number eight, be a lifelong learner. Keep reading and learning from others. We can learn anything from anybody. Number seven, do not fear failure. I remember her oftentimes saying, he who makes no mistakes makes nothing. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Number six, and this is something that my wife Becky and I have impressed upon our children anytime they went out on a date during our high school years. Remember who you are. You're not only representing yourself. Number five, and this is one that my wife will attest that I need to work on. There's only one reason you're late. You didn't leave on time. I need to practice that one. Grandmaism number four. Do what you say you will do. Under promise and over deliver. Number three. The wealthy man is not the one who has the most. He's the one who needs the least. Grandma would impress upon us to try to avoid living a life of materialism. Live a life where you're willing to give it away. Give away your talents. Share with others. Number two, live a life of gratitude. Appreciate the God-given talents that he's given you and utilize them. And the number one grandmaism. There's a line in a song, and I'm sorry, I can't remember who sings this. It goes something like, life is a long and winding ride. Better have the right one by your side. Grandma always impressed upon us, marry the right person. Hopefully many of you as young people still believe in the institution of marriage. But take your time, be patient. You've got to marry the right person. Find somebody with which you share a passion and plan on living the rest of your life pursuing that passion. 
If you, uh, if you dream with that person for the rest of your life with both long and short, uh, short-term goals, the passion will never die. <clears throat> I need to put these grandma-isms in perspective. Because they beg a question. The, the question in my mind is, how did grandma attain this much wisdom? For you see, she spent her entire 65 years in a 10-mile radius. It baffles me how she became such a wise lady. I want to leave you with one last parting thought. And uh, my wife, Becky, brought this to my attention. There is nothing more powerful than a humble person with a warrior, get it done spirit, who is driven by a bigger purpose. I'm gonna read that again. There is nothing more powerful than a humble person with a warrior, get it done spirit, who is driven by a bigger purpose. Students, I challenge you to be that person with that warrior spirit. I congratulate you for your scholastic achievements. All the best. Thank you.